Hello and welcome to Enchantment of Eternity's review for True Q, which is episode 6 of season 6 of Star Trek The Next Generation. Uh, this video is part of a series of videos where I review episodes of Star Trek as determined by my user polls. The episode to win my latest user poll is True Q. Now this episode is actually, this latest poll was actually a tie. It was a tie between two episodes, True Q and Birthright. Both uh, six season episodes, but uh, I prefer, much prefer True Q, so I chose that one. Uh, so True Q is the episode where a um, hot protege who's about to enter Starfleet Academy wins the trip or an Enterprise or something to intern there for a bit. And she starts uh, displaying magical powers when she saves Riker's life and then stops the warp, warp core breach. And then it's revealed that it's because she's a Q. So Q shows up and tries to take her back to the Q continuum. At first she does not want to go. But then she gives her the ultimatum that either she uh, goes to the Q continuum or she agrees to never use her powers ever again. If she does, she will be executed. And she says that she'll stay. But then... About five seconds later, she uses her powers to save Riker and everyone on the planet, so she goes with Q. Now, this, I think, is an underrated episode. I think it's actually really good. This is one of those episodes that I didn't think all that highly of when I first saw it. Uh, this is the early sixth season. The early sixth season of Next Generation wasn't all that great. It was mostly okay. There were some okay episodes, some terrible episodes, and a couple of really good ones. Second half of season six is almost, boo, almost all good ones. Like, almost all amazing episodes. It's like, amazing episode after amazing episode. But the first half of season six wasn't as hot uh and this was in that first half and i think this is an underrated q episode now unlike some of the more silly q episodes like uh, cupid or days i q which were the two previous ones this is the first one we sort of get more of a serious like dramatic tone to since q who and i've given my thoughts on q who over and over again overrated episode <clears throat> uh, so i won't give that one again uh and this one i think is an underrated episode i think this is a good dramatic use of q and i like how q is not the focus of the episode amanda rogers is the focus of the episode this uh having a q be um uh yeah uh the uh, uh, teenager finding out, human teenager finding out that they're actually the parents of Q. It's an interesting concept, and this, of course, it gets into her trying to deal with having these basic omniscient powers. Now, I can't help but think forward to some of Q's appearances on Voyager, which, of course, aired much later after this one. But when re-watching this episode, I can't help but think about that, particularly how when Amanda asks you, uh, you know, what can I do? He says, whatever you like. Like, what do you have your heart's desire? What do you want? You know, pearls, diamonds. Do you want to walk on the rings of some weird planet and blah, 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 blah. And, um, that made me think of the, uh, Death Wish in Voyager where they went to the cute continuum and everyone was bored out of their minds because <laughs> everyone can instantly have whatever they want. Life has no meaning. Uh, and that's what made me think of this Amanda Rogers. Like, why? And I can understand why she wouldn't want to be Q because the, the, you, if you instantly like have instant gratification of anything you could possibly want in the world at all times, forever, you gotta admit that become boring and life will lose its purpose because one of the main purposes of life is to strive to become better, to strive to earn things. I mean, the only reason a lot of things in life, like diamonds or what have you, are so precious is because they are have to be earned. They're hard to get. Now, I guess you could sort of the analogy of this story will be someone who is raised poor and then find that the parents are actually rich and so the rich parents want to take them away and give them their heart's desire and they find out oh what well, you know what a beautiful life because they're rich we can have everything they want but then they find out that their life gets boring because you get everything you want um but yeah so i think this story is a little bit like that but the head of the spin on it does omniscient powers uh, and I l actually think this is a really good character story, the way it builds Amanda Rogers' character. I think she's a very good guest star. 
Um, the way, you know, I like the scene in particular where, you know, she, of course she has to have a thing for Riker because every woman who ever comes on the show has to have a thing for Riker, which, I'm sorry, he's not that sexy. But <laughs> anyway, uh, she has a thing for Riker and so she takes him away to this, like, romantic place that she made up and was like and tries to have her uh, have him you know hook up and he's not interested because it's all fake and we've been through all this before Q your fake fantasy life whatever blah 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 and then he's like you know you can't make someone love you and she's like oh can't I and she, actually she, I think she does like she does like a, a whirl with her fingers instead of and like Q snaps his finger she does like a Sort sort of thing, and gets him to start going, oh Amanda, and start kissing her, and then he she at first it's like oh yeah, but then realizes how hollow it is, and she's like you're right, this is hollow and empty, and that's kind of a metaphor for all of her powers and all the stuff that she can do, and of course we have other metaphors such as the experiment she's supposed to do with Doctor Crusher, and uh, Q is like oh let's just instantly get it, and it totally fucks up the experiment, which I'm not sure exactly that. It would work that way. I mean, couldn't Q just use the magical powers to make the thing move at the same rate that it would if you wait, but just have it go a lot faster, but still go through the exact same process that it would over a long period of time? Seems like Q would be capable of doing that. So that metaphor felt a little forced to me, but the one with Riker, I think, actually did really work. Now, we got a lot of great Q moments in this episode, too, even though he was just a supporting character. One of my <laughs> favorite moments, of course, he turns Dr. Crush into a dog and that starts barking because she's, she's annoying him and she doesn't. he, he turns her back with that. Or, no, Amanda turns her back and Crush doesn't even realize it and Q's like, well, when you put it like that, I think you're absolutely right. Like, funny stuff. But one of my favorite moments... Uh, is when um, Q is talking to Picard, saying they have to, you know, introduce Q, Amanda to Q and whatnot, and uh, Picard's like, all right, well, if we're gonna have to introduce, let me introduce you to Amanda, we should at least pretend to be, and then Q hugs him and says, pals? And he's like, civil. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> that was a great moment. And of course, when he does introduce um, I mean, <laughs> Q to Amanda, that was funny as well because Q just bursts in and starts acting like an asshole and grabbing her head. And Picard's like, uh, uh, Amanda, let me introduce Q. Uh, Q. He's an uh, acquaintance of ours that, uh, that uh, we've known for years. This is the way Picard <laughs> just stumbles over that is amazing. And then Q starts asking Amanda about how, how she used her powers have you ever used your powers before and, and he starts giving the example he's like you know spontaneous combustion of someone you don't like and he just looks at Picard when he says it and Picard's like what and then turns back to you know that sort of thing like great moments with Q and I think it actually really works that Q is a supporting character in this and not the main focus and I think that makes this sort of comedic moments in an episode that's actually quite serious uh, shine more through than something like Q Poo, Q Poo. Sorry, <laughs> getting my episodes mixed up. Cupid, uh, where that's just over the top silly or heightened Q or something like that. Um, now, also, I gotta mention. Uh, I think this episode is iconic for you get one of the best Picard speeches and then you get the classic line after the speech. But Picard speech, I had quoted it before, um, where. Uh, Q says, uh, Q have superior morality, and Picard goes off on a rant. He's like, morality, I don't see it. I don't acknowledge it, Q. <laughs> like, that's a great moment. And then the Q responds by saying, you know, Jean-Luc, one of the reasons I think I come here is to listen to these wonderful speeches of yours, which is a classic line as well. <laughs> because Picard does give wonderful speeches, and that is a great moment. But that's, of course, Picard sticking up for Amanda because uh, Q's talking about executing her. But um, after he, you know, the speech was pointless because Q had already decided not to execute her in the first place to give her the ultimatum of not using her powers. And I think this scene, that scene where she did use her powers was an amazing scene. It was a really uh, powerful scene. 
um, where, you know, Riker is in La Forge or on the planet, and the planet's about, you know, stupid B-plot with some planet with some atmosphere is going to go bad, blah, 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 blah. You know, it's not too bad as far as B-plots go, but you don't really care about it, though. But anyway, <laughs> that's all going wrong. Everyone on the planet is about to die, including Riker and La Forge, and all of a sudden it just magically starts getting better, and Picard just looks towards Amanda, and she just doesn't look back. She's just staring straight ahead you know determined with this like determined look on her face and it's obvious uh that she's the one that's doing it. now <laughs> it is kind of funny that she had just promised like two seconds ago two minutes ago not to use her powers and then all of a sudden she's using her powers <laughs> um but that makes sense that she realizes and i think this is a, an important uh, sort of message of the episode that she can't really deny who she is at heart even if she wants to, because it's all she ever known, she has to be true to herself. And she's a Q, and she's just, if she, it's in her power to let, to save people, she's not just going to let them die. And this is kind of touched on Hyden Q, when Riker had a Q's powers, and there was this little girl who was died, and he could have saved her, but didn't, because he promised Picard not to use his powers, and that pissed him off. But this, I think, is a much better example, and much better use of that sort of analogy. Uh, and it's funny because it also reminds me of a couple other Star Trek episodes that touch on the similar topics. There's uh, Suddenly Human from Season 4 where you, they find this human boy uh, living amongst the Torellians or whatever the hell they're called. And uh, <laughs> Stupid Aliens only appear in one episode. And he sees himself as a Torellian or Torellian or however the hell you call it. And uh, Picard tries to convince him that he's a human and get him to, uh, you know, acknowledge his human uh, standards. But he doesn't and realizes it's a bad idea and lets him go back and live with his Torellian parents. Uh, and then the other episode I'm thinking of is Cardassians, uh, where they find a Cardassian orphan who's being raised on Bajor by Bajoran parents. And he's raised to sort of hate Cardassians and to identify with Bajorans. And then when they find out that he's actually the son of some hoy up uh, politician in Cardassia, they return him to his Cardassian parents, a move that I personally was completely against because obviously the young boy identified as a Bajoran and hated Cardassians, and I probably wouldn't doubt that the boy actually killed himself shortly after being forced to go back to Cardassia. Um, so, and you compare that, so in both cases they're trying to say, like, or at least I would say in the Cardassians' case, that the nurture uh, outweighs nature, the nurture versus nature argument. In those cases, I think nurture was definitely the case where the, the Torellian or whatever fuck <laughs> the aliens are called, that's how he identifies so he should live with them. And the same thing with the Cardassian. He should have stayed with the Bajoran parents, even though he was actually a Cardassian because that's how he identified himself. Now, in this case with Amanda, it's actually nature that beats out over nurture. And the reason for that is that uh, this is kind of a different situation. I mean, sure, she was raised human. She has human mentality. But having omniscient powers and having the ability to do whatever the hell she wants, it's... That's too much. That's too much, man. It's too much for her to try to just pretend to everything is normal when it's not she realized she just learned that something completely changes her life and she wish wasn't true wasn't but it is and she has to acknowledge it and she chooses to and she goes back to live with q and crush is like oh i you know hope i visit you know she says to crush i hope i can see you again she's like you're q you can do whatever you want Wrong, Dr. Crusher, because this is, um, the writers won't allow characters to reappear because this is an episodic show. <laughs> we don't know if that actually happened. However, here's my nitpick on this one. Um, we know from the episode Deja Q that the Q have the ability to turn Q into humans who are mortal and can die, which is what that whole episode is about. The Q continuum turned Q into a mortal, and he could actually die. Why don't they do the same for Amanda Rogers? I mean, obviously she wants to be human, so instead of giving her the choice, oh, try not to use your powers ever again, and if we do, we'll kill you. Instead of saying that, why don't we say, hey, we can 
make you human the same way we made Q human. Well, you won't have power, so you won't even be tempted. You can go back to living the life you wanted. That seems like that would be the better option for her, but of course that would be very antithetical to the whole theme of the episode, which is about how she had to acknowledge her true nature. But she actually didn't. <laughs> you know. But whatever. Um, I still find it a very, uh, a very interesting um, character story and a very powerful episode. So my rating for a True Q out of ten uh, is an eight. Uh, extremely good. Um, not quite nine status for me because the episode does drag a bit in some places and even though I do love a lot of the themes with Amanda Rogers and Q, um, I don't think it's the most interesting episode in the world and I can kind of see why this is overlooked a bit but then again as I said it has a lot of great Q moments and I do like the ending with Amanda deciding to go back. Uh, so yeah, eight out of ten. So anyway, that is it for my review of True Q. Uh, I will be back to cover Deep Space Nine episode uh, and the Voyager episode and Enterprise episode that won my episode polls. So be sure to check out my channel for that and many more videos on Star Trek as well as I cover many other shows like The Expanse and more. So be sure to subscribe so you can keep up with all of that. And thanks a lot for watching.